In the previous lessons, we learned how to draw a Lewis dot structure and we draw with single bond, double bond, and lone pair. But what make up those type of bonds? There are reasons why they call double bond, single bond, and triple bond. And basically, if we look at this in terms of orbitals, for single bond, it's basically you have this head-on overlap of the p orbitals or the s orbitals or just p orbital and p orbitals they just get, if i were to redraw this and they overlap each other okay so this would come overlap each other and then if i would redraw this they would overlap each other those are the overlap of two type of orbitals s and p or p and p or sometimes you can just have s orbital overlap with another s orbitals and that's what make a single bond and we have a specific term for those type of bond it is called Sigma so a single bond is made up a Sigma bond okay but when we have a double bond what's happening is that for the P orbital they would overlap side to side and how does that work is that inside here you would have a Sigma bond right there but on the side to side, we have something called a pi bond. So for a double bond, what you're going to have is one sigma bond and one pi bond. And lastly, for the triple bond, you have one sigma bond and two pi bond. And you are responsible for knowing the number of sigma and pi bond for different types of bonds. Single bond, double bond, and triple bond. Now let's apply this concept. For example, we have this structure right here, and I label A, B, C, and D. What you need to do is, sometimes I will ask you to determine or to identify the number of pi bond and sigma bond in each of those particular bond. And for example, we have this structure right here, and I label A, B, C, and D, and I ask you specifically, identify the number of sigma and pi bond in this particular bond right here, and also, Determine if the bond allow free rotation. So if we look at this, use your common sense. If you have this right here, can you freely rotate this? That means, what does the word rotation mean? Rotation mean is allowed to turn 360. If you have this, can you turn 360? No, you will get stuck right there, right? So you cannot really freely rotate 360. But with a single bond, you are allowed to do that. So now, what else do we know about the three type of bond? Well, look at the length, right? This is probably the longest one. So single bond is the longest, and followed by double bond, and of course the triple bond would be the shortest. Now let's look at in terms of strength. Well, of course this is a lot longer. Of course the atom are now farther apart, where the triple bond, you have this shorter length bonds, which give this one of the strongest of the three and this will be the weakest in terms of strength now let's apply what we have learned about the three types of bond to understand more about this compound the first thing we have to do is identify the number of sigma and pi bond for each and i label a b c d then lastly determine if the bond allows free rotation let's do a a is a triple bond so how many sigma bond does it have? It has one sigma bond and two pi bond. Does it allow free rotation? And we know that the only type of bond that allows free rotation is going to be single bond. So this does not allow free rotation. So we're going to put no FR, no free rotation. What about C? C is what? It just has a single bond, so it just has one sigma bond. Because it's a single bond, now it's allow free rotation. There you go. Isn't that easy? What about for B? It's a double bond, so it has one sigma bond and one pi bond. Does it allow free rotation? No. Okay, so therefore, we have no free rotation. And you kind of look at the pattern, you realize that anything that has a pi bond to it, it doesn't allow free rotation. And lastly, we have D over here. It is a single bond, so it's one sigma bond. And of course, it has free rotation. Isn't that easy? And that's the concept of the type of bonds.